All right, I've had a numerous requests to do this. I'm getting over a cold right now, so don't mind my voice. But uh, a lot of people have asked me to do kind of a tour of the uh, bookshelf here, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm gonna try to get through this as quick as I can. Let me see here. Way down there on the bottom shelf, I got stuff all over the place here. You have to forgive me. But down here, <clears throat> down there, I have a lot of printed articles and things, things that I printed over the years. Uh, this is not all just uh, spiritual type books. I have a lot of other books as well. Uh, a lot of this row right here basically is mostly, predominantly, um, books about woodworking types of things like that. Uh, a lot of different issues, uh, different subjects. So I'm going to skip that row there. A lot of that's just for my professional life. Um, first book here we have is Brotherhood of Darkness by Stan Monteith. Good book, covers a lot of the basics of uh, the New World Order conspiracy issue. This one here, Sasquatch the uh, on Bigfoot. Uh, I just bought that one for kicks mostly. That I saw it used and I thought, oh, I'll just pick it up see what they have to say. Haven't read it yet, but uh, mainly just for documentation purposes. That one there, Environmental Overkill. I'm talking about how the environmentalist agenda is more about destroying private property. This is one of the first books that kind of woke me up to some of the conspiracy type issues. How big corporations work with government. Uh, None Dare Call It cons uh, Treason. I haven't read that one yet. I've heard of it. Sold at a used bookstore locally here and decided to buy it. Biology of Doom about some of the biological weapons and things. Again, I haven't read that. Just bought it. A lot of these I'll go to used bookstores and I'll see them and I'll just pick them up with the antenna reading it eventually. New Genesis by Robert Mueller. He was one of the guys at the United Nations, prominent New Age philosopher. I've showed this in some of my other videos. I think the Ridiculous Bible Perversions of the New Age. And uh, in there he actually talks about we need a new version, a new Bible that's uh, friendly to the New World Order, basically. Protocols of Zion, again, just documentation here. I don't believe in a Jewish conspiracy and all this other stuff. I think it was a Catholic thing, really. Pretty much Jesuits that brought that out. Globalism. Again, I saw that thing thought, hey, that's interesting looking. I uh, haven't read it yet. <clears throat> Up here, Language of the King James Bible by Gail Ripplinger. Very good book. Read that. Been through it a couple times. The uh, Concise compendium of the Warren Commission report on the assassination of John F. Kennedy, the original Warren Commission report. I just, again, I picked that up for documentation. I don't really have any desire to sit down and read that thing. High Treason, uh, there's some documentation in there, some quotes and some pictures and things that I wanted. Uh, again, I haven't read that whole thing, just, again, documentation. Next one here, Lucifer Throne. By William and Schne Sharon Schneblin. Uh, very good book. Put out by Czech Publications. Uh, I think it took me about two days to read that thing. I mean, really, really good. Very good book. Occult, or Masonic and Occult Symbols Illustrated by uh, Kathy Burns. Very, also a very good book. Deals with a lot of the symbology that's out there in the world. And the underlying meanings of it. Billy Graham and His Friends by Dr. Kathy Burns. Um... Very, very good book on Billy Graham and his connections, the apostasy uh, that he brought in. Uh, the Devil and Mr. Smith, a story about a young Pentecostal uh, young man and how he got into Satanism and then how he got out of it and got saved. Freed from Witchcraft, uh, trying to get the best picture here. Kind of hard to read. It's gold lettering. Freed from Witchcraft by Doreen Irvine. And uh, that's another interesting book. She was a woman, young girl actually, back in World War II. Uh, she eventually had to live out on the street, got into prostitution, got into a strip club, and worked her way into a satanic cult and basically became a high priestess in witchcraft. 
And it's interesting because she went to a meeting, worldwide meeting of a council of witches back in the 1950s, and they discussed ways to make witchcraft to bring it into the mainstream. And a few years later, Bewitched came out on TV. And of course, uh, <coughs> witchcraft was very innocent and nice, you know, back then with the Bewitched show, but now it's just openly evil. Uh, Satan Hunter by Tom Wedge. Another good book exposing a lot of the satanic movement. The Antichrist and a Cup of Tea. Uh, Timothy Cohen, I think a guy's name is. Haven't read it, but again, documentation. I don't agree with this. I don't believe the Antichrist is going to be from the British royal family. I do understand the, the, the 13th bloodline Merovingian thing, all that, but I believe the Antichrist will be a perfect counterfeit for Jesus Christ. Uh, can't go into that in more detail. Your Rugged Constitution, a little illustrated guide to the Constitution, and a very interesting book there. Millennium by Tex Mars. Uh, just bought it, saw it used, picked it up. Haven't had a chance to read it yet. Uh, I do disagree with Tex Mars and his stands against the Jewish people. I don't agree with him at all on that. The Franklin Cover Up by uh, John W. DeCamp. A uh, very interesting book here. This is about a Republican congressman to Nebraska, right there, and he uncovered a huge, huge child pedophilia ring among the Republicans, and he is a Republican congressman. He's not some liberal Democrat or something, but, uh, and it went to the Reagan-Bush administration. Just a tale of corruption and just makes you sick. So, a very interesting book. Fourth Reich of the Rich by Des Griffin. This is one of the first conspiracy books I ever read. A lot of good information. Um, I think, too, he's also, like Tex Mars over here, he's also somewhat anti-Jewish. You know, anti-Zionist is what they say. But really good information. Gets into the Federal Reserve notes. And that was one of the things that really made an impact on me when I read it. Concise Dictionary of the Occult and New Age uh, by Deborah Lardy. A very good book. Uh, just good little descriptions of different movements within the occult. They do use the New American Standard Version, so I don't agree with that. Masonry, Beyond the Light by William Schneblin. Also a very good book. Um, interesting in here. I actually have the page marked there. Um, interesting that he says about in Ephrata, Pennsylvania, which is not too far from where I live, there's a colony, it's just a tourist attraction now, called the Ephrata Cloister, and it was the first uh, Rosicrucian colony in North America. And they had some very weird beliefs, and it's just an occult uh, wonderland, I guess you could call it. It's very, very weird there, very creepy. I've been there a time or two. Um, maybe I'll do a video of that someday. Uh, Conspiracy of Silence, a book about an Air Force captain, retired, who talks about the UFO issue. I haven't read it yet, but uh, looks interesting. Seduction of Christianity by Dave Hunt. Again, I saw it used at a bookstore. I don't agree with Dave Hunt in some of his stands against the King James Bible, but picked up the book nonetheless. Uh, Secret Societies and Psychological Warfare is the next one here. That's a very interesting book. A lot of very detailed things into mind control, how mind control works, how propaganda is used. Uh, <clears throat> very interesting stuff there. I have to see if I can get it back in. I can't get it back in with one hand. <laughs> Should have just left it in there. Uh, this this one up here on top, I run out of room on my shelf. So, but eight thousand differences between the Nestle Alon and Texas Receptus by Dr. Jack Mormon. Uh, more of a just for reference. I mean, it's not exactly a something you'd sit down and read, um, but a lot of good information. Let's see there. So, but uh, we'll get back to the order of the books here. The next one is the uh, this one, Shadows of Power, about the Council on Foreign Relations. Also, a very very good book. Bloodlines of the Illuminati by Fritz Springmeier. 
I had a chance to write back and forth a little bit with Fritz Springmeier. Uh, he's a good guy, a Christian, not afraid to, to talk about his faith. Um, just an amazing book. Talks about the 13 different families, how they've intermarried for many centuries now. Uh, very rich, powerful people, these members of the Illuminati. Very interesting, well-documented book. Uh, very good book. Mysterious Monuments and Codex Magica by Tex Mars. Again, like I said, I don't agree with Tex Mars and some of his stands against the Jews, but these are both good books. This one here is about some secret uh, hand signals that people in the occult will do. This one is about uh, some of the weird buildings and architecture around the, the world that is uh, occult in uh, the, the psychology behind building it that way. Here we have uh, Regicide, the official assassination of JFK, presents some of the best theories, I think, on the assassination of JFK, what happened there. This guy's a historian, and he actually talked with a um, CIA agent about uh, what went on there. They called it Operation Zipper, I think it was. Um, the Globalists by Dennis Cuddy. I uh, haven't read that one, but uh, I bought it mostly for documentation. Uh, the Medusa File by Colonel Craig Roberts. I read parts of it. Again, my time is often very limited. Um, dawn, now's the dawning of the New Age, New World Order. Here another book by Dennis Cuddy. Uh, that, that one I did read. It was one of the early books I read. A uh, very good book. Secret Records Revealed. Another book by Dennis Cuddy. Next we have The Federal Siege at Ruby Ridge. This is by Randy and Vicki Weaver. Uh, they were there, obviously. It was uh, Randy. No, I'm sorry, it wasn't Vicky. That was the mother. Um, the, the oldest daughter. I can't remember her name right now, but she. The two of them wrote this book about what they went through there. How the federal government just came in and. and uh, it was a bad situation. Place called Waco by David Thibodeau. He was another one of the survivors of the Branch Davidian compound. Uh, he gets into a lot of what David Koresh was doing, a lot of his teachings. David Koresh was a very weird, strange individual. But having said that, they shouldn't have killed the guy. And especially the little kids that were in there that were slaughtered. Just another very horrible, disgusting thing. America's Secret Establishment, The Order of Skull and Bones by... Anthony Sutton, very good book about the educational system, but also about some of the men who are involved in the secret society um, up at Yale University, how they go on to positions of power. And here we have A Charge to Keep by George W. Bush. This I purchased this to document some of the quotes where he actually admits, George W. Bush admits to being a third generation member of Skull and Bones, which he is. Fleshing Out Skull and Bones, a phenomenal book. I mean, a lot of good information in there. Uh, very similar to the other one there by Anthony Sutton, but goes into even more detail. Just give me a minute here. i got to get this box out of the way before I can continue. <laughs> um, see if it holds my weight. All right, next we have... Fox's Christian Martyrs of the World, a little condensed version of Fox's Martyrs. Uh, good book, Satan's New World Order by James Melton. Uh, just a short little concise book on the New World Order conspiracy. The Best Democracy Money Can Buy by Greg Pallast, reported for the BBC. Just interesting there. <coughs> Brings out some interesting information. Here's a book on 9-11 by Dennis Cuddy. Another book there on 9-11. They're both okay. 9-11 Commission Report, again bought for documentation purposes, Order Out of Chaos by Paul Joseph Watson, um, pretty good book, uh, it's uh, another one, I, uh, it's, it's just covered a lot of good uh, information, 9-11 Descent into Tyranny by Alex Jones, uh, it's basically almost a transcript of his video 9-11 Road to Tyranny. Uh, then here we have a book 
by John R. Race on the Masonic Lodge, showing that you shouldn't be a member of that. Freemasonry by Charles Finney. Uh, that's why he came out of Freemasonry. In other words, he's not defending it. Letters on Freemasonry by John Quincy Adams. I haven't read either of those two books. Uh, I intend to someday when I get the time. Grand Canyon. It's a book, Creation Science. Uh, view of how the Grand Canyon was formed. A lot of nice pictures and things. They use new versions, which, you know, kind of spoils the book, but Pagan Christianity, I refer to this in my house church videos. Uh, a lot of good points, but some really, really false doctrine. You have to be real careful of that. I don't recommend that book. Then we get a bunch of uh, more books on woodworking and things. Um, just nature and, and whatever else. Here we have a, an interesting book, uh, Sufferings in Africa. Uh, this is by... James Riley, Captain James Riley, is actually a situation back in the 1800s where their ship crashed off the coast of Africa and they were actually taken into slavery. So you had white slaves under black masters. Uh, just kind of an interesting turn, twist on things here. King Leopold's Ghost, another interesting historical book about this sick murderer here. He uh, slaughtered hundreds of thousands of Africans in the Belgian Congo. He was the king of, of Belgium. And uh, all for the love of money, the rubber industry. Um, how I found Livingston in Central Africa. Haven't had time to read that thing yet. Uh, I'm pretty much familiar with the story from other books here. But this is another one by Henry Morton Stanley, the guy that found Livingston. This is Travelings in uh, Asia and uh, some in America too. Interesting book on exploration. It was a big thing back in the mid-1800s. A lot of the uh, Royal Geographic Society people were going out trying to find the source of the Nile and all the other stuff. Very interesting. Uh, Dark Safari, a book about Henry Morton Stanley going to find Livingston and about some of what Henry Morton Stanley went through with life. The Trail of Tears, talking about how that uh, how early white settlers basically went in and put Indians, you know, Native Americans into concentration camps. Oh, I'm sorry, I mean reservations. <laughs> yeah. Uh, more things change, the more things stay the same. A couple other books there on uh, rhyming dictionary, How to Build a Log Cabin for $3,000. I have a lot of different interests, okay? Um, a Rage to Live, this is about Richard Burton, a very interesting man, African explorer. He was uh, very intelligent, but unfortunately he used his intelligence for the devil. He was one of the ones who, he was the man that translated uh, a lot of the oriental uh, sex manuals, the perfume gar garden, the Kama Sutra, the Kama Shastra, all that stuff. And he basically started uh, pornography. Uh, but it's he was a very interesting man. Okay, there's that picture of him on the front there. <coughs> African Explorer. Again, this is another interesting book here. American Family on the African uh, Frontier. Kind of funny. They went to Africa looking for, for fortune. And then they went to a couple different other countries. And they basically lost everything that they had. And they returned to California, where they were from. And on their family property, they ended up striking oil. <laughs> So the wealth that they were looking for all over the world was right in their own backyard. Uh, some interesting things there. And a couple more books. I don't really see much else here. Prisoner of Mao. It's about a guy that escaped communist China. Uh, what would Jesus do? That's, I bought that for documentation purposes. I'm not into that movement. The Long Walk. There, chair building thing. The uh, Long Walk. Uh, it's about a man that escaped from Siberia, a concentration camp in Siberia, and basically walked the whole way down to Thailand, I think it was. Very interesting. Uh, big game hunting, different things around Theodore Roosevelt. <clears throat> Up here on the next level, we have the unveiling of Timbuktu by about René Caillé, the guy that found, he was a French explorer that found Timbuktu. The Jesuits by Malachi Martin. Um, 
I, I, again, it's just for documentation. I bought that thing. Uh, saw it used in a bookstore. I bought it. Here we have Eternity in Their Hearts by uh, Don Richardson, missionary to Papua New Guinea. Interesting how they went in and they actually talked to the natives and a lot of the natives had the Ten Commandments as their beliefs. Uh, why? Well, because the Bible says there in the book of Romans about that the law is written in their hearts. Uh, very interesting. Prince of Darkness there uh, by Grant R. Jeffrey. Haven't read it. Picked it up there. The Great Tribulation. Uh, I don't remember all that that one's about. Uh, here you have the Final Countdown by Billy Crone. Back before I knew what he stood for <laughs> and stood against. Not a Bible believer. Me obey him. Bought that for a, a sister in the Lord. She read it and gave it back. <laughs> Apparently didn't agree. Roman Catholicism by Lorraine Bootner. Again, bought it for documentation. The uh, Michael Rood book there. I don't agree with the Messianic Jew movement. Again, for documentation. Harry Potter and the Bible. Next one there, Pokemon and Harry Potter. Bought these because my nephews and nieces were getting into some of this stuff and I wanted to be able to give them information. Six Pointed Star by Dr. O.J. Graham. Right there. A very good book talking about the hexagram that it's not of biblical origin. It's actually a pagan symbol. How to Make an Atheist Backslide by Ray Comfort. I like Ray Comfort. I like his sense of humor and everything, but he's, again, he's not a Bible believer and he's got some rather strange acquaintances. That I think... Well, whatever. Not man crafts and skills. Uh, again, woodworking stuff there. How to Get Your Book Published by Sam Gipp. I was originally going to write a book before I got into video ministry. Um, Charismatic Cult Leaders. Uh, another book that has some interesting stuff in it. Talks about uh, David Koresh and um, Jim Jones and some of the other guys. Book of Bible Lists. This lists a lot of different subjects and then scriptures where you can find information smoke screens by jack chick good book on the uh catholic infiltration of churches and things for his pleasure by sam gipp good book on how we are created as christians to bring god pleasure uh, to, <clears throat> to live in a way that's pleasing to him it's not all about you know winning thousands and thousands of people to the lord the lord wants to get to know you personally we give that one out here at our church, The Joy of the Second Coming by Dr. Hugh Pyle. It's very good. Answers to the Jehovah's Witnesses, Answers to the Mormons. Uh, pretty decent books. Here's one, I, I Just Wanted More Land. It was a big thing years ago about uh, the prayer of Jabez. People were using it almost as a, a cult type of a thing. Pray this prayer and then you ask for what you want and you get it. Uh, pretty decent book. Uh, Tongues. Prosperity and Godhood, by again by Kathy Burns. A uh, very good book on the charismatic movement. The Chaos of the Cults. I bought that one for documentation because King James Onlyism is listed as a cult. I thought that was interesting. Endeavor, about uh, Captain Cook. Exploration down in South America. Kind of went through a thing there for a while. I was really into the exploration subject. Fight On by Sam Gipp. Haven't read it. Just glanced through it. All Quiet on the Western Front. If you've watched any of Ruckman's material, you know why I bought that book. He's always referring to it. And there are some really interesting things in it. Uh, God's Wrath on Left Behind by Lisa Ruby. It debunks a lot of the stuff in the Left Behind series. Um, Tim LaHaye definitely crosses the line in a lot of what he teaches. Uh, Gary E. Guiley. This little church went to market, talking about how the churches are becoming businesses. Fast Facts on Islam, there. John Ankerberg. Uh, I don't recommend that book. John Ankerberg's not a Bible believer. Here we have Christian Resistance. Another good book. Uh, Don Boys put that little booklet out. When should you fight? When should you give in? That kind of deal. Uh, Brother printed this thing and gave it to me, Menace of the Religious Movie, by A.W. Tozer, a little article there, essentially, Hitler's Cross, about a lot of the Nazi propaganda, by Erwin Lutzer, uh, pretty good book, 
not uh, King James, but it's still a decent book. Fallen Angel, there about uh, Jimmy Page, the fact that he bought Aleister Crowley's mansion, and continued a lot of the teachings of Aleister Crowley, and uh, how he put spells on people at the rock concerts. Inside Rock Music, we give this thing out here at Bible Believers Fellowship. Uh, it's a good book. These next three we have, uh, <clears throat> boy, my voice is giving out. What's Wrong with Christian Rock, Dancing with Demons, and The Devil's Disciples. All three by Jeff Godwin. Uh, all three are very good. The Priest, The Priest, The Woman, and The Confessional. About auricular confession in the Catholic Church, how it's not of the Lord. From personal experience of Char Charles Chiniqui, who was around back in the late 1800s. Blood and Fire, about the founding of the Salvation Army. Haven't read it yet, but it looks pretty good. Uh, J. Frank Norris, I have known. Biography about J. Frank Norris. Definitely a good book. Uh, select Sermons of George Whitfield. Good man. He was a Calvinist, but uh, still did a lot of good work for the Lord. Um, here we have a book on Charles Spurgeon. Just found that recently at a bookstore, so I haven't had a chance to read that. Uh, Billy Sunday, very good book. Quite an interesting individual. Not perfect, uh, but he was definitely an interesting guy. The Life and Sayings of Sam P. Jones, written by his wife. Um, good book, a lot of good information in it. Uh, he was quite a character as well. The Life of Dwight L. Moody by his son. And this is a original first edition, 1900 is when it was published. You can see the old pages in there. This is actually rebound. <coughs> Excuse me, rebound. You can see right there where it was rebound. But uh, D.L. Moody died in 1899, so this came out the very next year. A uh, very interesting book. This is one here, 20 Years Fighting the Devil by James Lyman. He's been kicked off YouTube a bunch of times. Uh, very militant street preacher. Had a chance to meet him. Brother Lyman, uh, good guy. Actually very humble when you talk to him, you know, face to face. There's a lot of guys that are rough. You know, when you actually talk to them, they're really nice guys. Very humble. But uh, Lester Roloff, I haven't had a chance to read that one yet. Secret Church, little uh, fiction, historical fiction, I guess you could call it. Bought this originally for Sunday school class, our teacher, wanted to read something to the kids that, you know, would continue the next week. Um, it's okay, I guess, but um, William Tyndale, another great man of God. Of course, many of you know who he is, Billy Sunday there. Uh, that's a pretty good book. I don't agree with some of the stuff in it. That guy kind of does, tries to psychoanalyze Billy Sunday, which I get irritated with. John Wesley, um, that's a good book about the founder of the Methodist Church. Again, he wasn't a perfect man, but you know, he did a lot of good good things. Uh, the Reformation, this book here, and then the, the bigger one there, uh, mostly for documentation. Blood of the Cross, a uh, good, pretty good book there. Been a long time since I read that thing. And one book stands alone by Dr. Douglas Stauffer. Uh, referred to it, but I haven't actually sat down and read it from cover to cover. But I've read good portions of it, and it is a good book. I highly recommend all of Dr. Stauffer's materials. Uh, Biblical Scholarship by Ruckman. Uh, very in-depth, very thorough coverage of a lot of, the <clears throat> a lot of the variant readings and things like that. It's pretty good. The Mark of the Beast. Another good book by Ruckman on uh, interesting points about the Antichrist. Uh, this is a book, what's it called? Which Bible is God's Word? Um, I think that was a Gail Ripplinger book. It's pretty good. Went and pushed the one back in too far. <laughs> this is one on the new King James. I'm not going to pull it out because it's a pain to get it back in. But i got two of those. Uh, My Plea for the Old Sword by Eon Paisley. 
again, I have some issues with him, but, you know, it's a decent little book. Uh, this is a really good one here, The Secret History of the Jesuits by Edmund Paris. Brings out a lot of interesting stuff. I've referred to this a couple times in some of my videos. Uh, the Book of Bible Problems by Dr. Gerardus Bow. I'm probably pronouncing his name wrong, but uh, good book answers a lot of the supposed contradictions in the King James Bible. Let's Weigh the Evidence by Barry Burton. Good little, easy to understand, quick reading book put out by Chick Publications on the Bible version issue. Next we have Gail Ripplinger's Ditches Blind Guides. She answers a lot of the critiques of her New Age Bible versions book. Next we have uh, Tabernacle Essays on Bible Translation by James Seitler. Uh, Dean Bergen Society. Some good articles in there. Cutting Edge Lodged in the Groves. Talks about how David Bay needs to spend more time in the Bible and less time in the occult. Uh, there's a danger in that. Carnal curiosity in you. Start looking for uh, you know, Illuminati behind everything. Um, basically, he's trying to say in some of his stuff that uh, you know that the Illuminati, Francis Bacon, and all this created the King James Bible, and, which is pretty absurd. That book debunks him. But uh, the Forgotten Trinity by James White bought that for documentation. You can see there the. Tricatra, I've showed that in the Ridiculous Bible Perversions of the New Age video. And here we have James White's most recent publishing of this idiotic book. And this one here. And then we have here the Scholarship Only Controversy by Ruckman. And he totally refutes James White. It's actually kind of funny. Uh, this one here, about John R. Rice by uh, Herb Evans, I think it is. <clears throat> and uh, John R. Rice was not a King James Bible believer. He used the King James Bible and did great things for the Lord, but he didn't believe the King James Bible. He went with the Westcott and Hort reasoning. Uh, why the King James Bible is the perfect Word of God. Again, we give that one out in our ministry here. Very good. Uh, Narnia. This is another one by uh, Dr. Stauffer and Spargimino, the guy, uh, the brother from... No Hutchings program, I believe. Uh, but that's a, another good book. If the Foundations Be Destroyed by Chick Salaby. Uh, a good book refuting the NIV. This one here was given to me from the uh, KJV store. And I did glance through it. I haven't had time to read it in great detail yet. I did see some issues where they were kind of attacking the King James a little bit. You know, kind of putting a little bit of doubt into people's minds. So I can't recommend that one. Uh, Defending the King James Bible by D.A. Waite. Um, I can't defend his thing of, of uplifting the Textus Receptus a little bit too much. Don't agree with that, but this is a good book, and a lot of his ministry is, is uh, very good. Um, I listen to a lot of D.A. Waite's preaching, and he does a good job when he believes and, and you know, reads the King James Bible. Last Grenade by Peter Ruckman. I've read most of it. I had a friend that had bought a copy and he showed it to me and I was sitting there reading it. and He wouldn't let it let me take it along so I had to buy my own. <laughs> uh, the Answer Book. This is the very first book I ever purchased by Dr. Sam Gipp on the Bible version issue. I still recommend this the most for new uh, Christians. You can actually read the whole thing online at chick.com. Probably, I'd say, the best basic book out there that can help you to answer the criticisms of the new version advocates. Babylon Religion by David Daniels. Very good little book. Easy to read, easy to understand. Well illustrated uh, on the Catholic Church and the fact that it is Mystery Babylon. Uh, reading and understanding the variations between the critical apparatuses of Nestle's 25th and 26th editions. By, again by Dr. Sam Gitt. Uh, many people are not aware the fact that the newest editions of the Nestle's text have had to return to uh, Texas Receptus readings in over 400 places. Um, I'm going to stop there because I see my battery 
is just about dead and my throat is also just about gone my voice rather so I'm gonna quit for now All right, here we are in part two of the tour, the great tour. Um, <clears throat> I got some other lights on here, so it's a little bit brighter. I ended here with Sam Gipps' book on the variations between the Nestles 25th and 26th. Uh, there's a 27th out now, but that just they changed a couple other things. But uh, the text is mostly the same. Um, but anyhow, uh, Forever Settled by Dr. Jack Mormon. Very good book. Gets into a lot of the details. Pretty technical. But then again, the Bible version issue is a pretty technical issue. AV 1611, New Testament. This is an original uh, reprinted copy of a first edition 1611. It's not a, you know, printed as to what they think it looked like. It's a photo scan copy. I've shown that on video before. Uh, I love the title of this one. Probably one of my favorite titles. Things that are different are not the same by Dr. Mickey Carter. Uh, you need to get a hold of that title right there. Things that are different are not the same. They say, all the Bibles are the same. You know, they're pretty much the same. No, they're not. Why? Because they're different. All right. Uh, good little book on the Bible version issue. Uh, Billy Graham and his friends. As I showed down there, this is just a spare copy. I found this at a local bookstore. Final Authority by Dr. William P. Grady. Good book. That right there is as far as I got on it. Um, <clears throat> other projects came up and I just haven't had a chance to get back to it. King James Version Defended. Edward Hills. Uh, again, I haven't read this one. It's on my list. Which Bible by David Otis Fuller. Good book. I've referred to it in some of my videos. There's the markers in it yet. Which Bible Can We Trust by Les Garrett, compiled by Les Garrett. It's a bunch of different articles, but uh, also a very good book. Now this one here is probably Dr. Peter Ruckman's most controversial book. One of his most controversial, well the other one's coming up. Uh, Manuscript Evidence. A lot of people get all upset about that one, but it's a very good book. Ruckman's Apocalypse, a kind of an illustrated uh, painting artist rendition of what the book of Revelation is going to be like. Uh, pretty good book there. Freedom's Ring, Baltus as a Gift, again by Dr. Doug Stauffer. Uh, gave it to uh, actually my mother, bought it for her for Christmas, I think it was, and uh, gave it to her. She read it, she said it was very good. I haven't had time to read it, looked through it a little bit. Uh, basically, again, on uh, Christian relationship to the Lord on repentance and things like that. So I'm looking forward to reading it when I get the time. The only authorized picture of Christ. A uh, little booklet there by Gail Ripplinger and another guy put that out. Uh, King James and his translators bought that for our Bible study uh, by Gail Ripplinger. We went over that, <coughs> most of it, in our Bible study. Another book that's controversial by Ruckman, Black is Beautiful. This is one about UFOs and Satanism and all those kinds of things that most Christians are scared to death of. Um, I've read parts of it. I haven't read the whole thing. I listen to a lot of his audio teachings on the subject of UFOs and whatever. And uh, <clears throat> whether you believe in UFOs or not, you got to respect the guy for at least covering the issue. Most preachers will not They'll avoid anything controversial. Here we have An All of Thy Word by Gail Ripplinger. Uh, just a, a phenomenal book. I mean, I don't, I don't know how she writes these books. I mean, it just, they're like, you know, textbooks. I mean, really, really good book there. Uh, there you have the Textus Receptus and the Masoretic Hebrew in one volume put out by the Trinitarian Bible Society. You can see their emblem right there here we have new age versions by gail ripplinger um, <clears throat> you can see all the little marks i have in that again i refer to that in, in different studies very good book new age cults and religions by tex mars i use that mostly for reference kind of like a dictionary type of a deal uh, this is another 
good one from Ruckman. Why I'm not a Seventh-day Adventist. You see the guy there, he's working his way hard. He's got the Ten Commandments strapped to his back, you know. And that's pretty accurate. Uh, this one here, I actually purchased when Sam Yip was up in Pottstown, PA. I need to do a video on this. This is a co collaboration between Dr. Gip and this brother here, uh, Bobby, a Bobby Adams. And it shows how that many times the um, Texas Receptus readings that have, were introduced in the 26th edition of Nestle's text, how that these things have been corrected, and yet the new versions have not been updated. So, interesting. I'm going to do a study on that eventually. Early manuscripts in the authorized version and early church father quotations in the authorized version. I did a video on that, early manuscript evidence for the King James Bible. You can watch it here on YouTube. Uh, the Revision Revised by Dean Bergen. I bought that again for documentation. Uh, he writes in typical 19th century style, which is uh, much more intelligent than the way we write today. A very wise man. Uh, but the, here, the next one, we have the 2006 Geneva Bible, again by Sam Gipp. We get a lot of questions on the Geneva Bible. People think that it's the right Bible, and the King James was polluted by King James himself and all this other stuff. No, sorry. God's hand of approval is upon the King James Bible. It doesn't mean that the, you know, you don't put the Geneva Bible in with the new versions as a corrupt, wicked Alexandrian. It's not, but it's just... God's purpose was not to have the Geneva Bible uh, as his inspired word. It came out later as the King James Bible. Um, <clears throat> continuing on, the NIV, the making of a contemporary translation, and uh, Kenneth Barker, a lot of the editors of the NIV contributed to that thing, and just a vicious attack on the King James Bible throughout it. Uh, just, you wouldn't believe some of the stuff. I've referred to that one again in some of my other studies. Burton Goddard, the NIV story. Uh, that's the one I show in, in the Real Bible Version issue exposed, where he admits that they did part of the translation at the University of Salamanca in Spain, Roman Catholic University. Uh, the next one's a very interesting book, Isaiah, The Little uh, Bible Inside the Bible, by Micah Colston. Uh, he's a brother here on YouTube. Uh, the 33rd book, I think, is his YouTube channel is and he puts out some really good videos from time to time on the Bible version issue. But he has a very interesting theory here. There are 66 chapters in the Bible. And there are six, or I'm sorry, 66 books in the Bible, 66 chapters in the book of Isaiah. And you compare Isaiah chapter 1 to Genesis, there are some similarities. You, pay, you compare Isaiah chapter 2 to Exodus, there are also similarities. So, interesting little book, interesting concept. You can probably contact him if you want a copy of that. Uh, <clears throat> the Path of the Second Advent, another book by little booklet by Ruckman. Lawrence Vance, Archaic Words in the Authorized Version. Gets into defining a lot of the words that we don't commonly use today. But then he goes on to show that actually a lot of these supposed archaic words appear in publications like Time Magazine or Newsweek or whatever. Interesting book. And he also compares the King James Bible archaic words, sometimes or easy to understand words, and the new versions will actually make archaic words in the same passage. Uh, good book. King James Unjustly Accused by Stephen Coaston. There, a um, uh, book talking about the thing that King James was supposedly a sodomite, which he was not. Uh, another good book to defend King James. Knave's Topical Bible. I just I picked that up at a used bookstore again just for documentation purposes. This one here is one that a, a pastor gave to me because he knows I was into the whole Bible version issue thing. It's interlinear Hebrew, Greek, English. I haven't really done much with that. Moving on here. A lot of different books to cover. I'm not going to go through all those little booklets. Most of them are from Ruckman. Uh, the Unknown Bible, good book, about the King James Bible, Why I'm Not a Calvinist. I haven't read that one yet. Listen to his studies on it. Right there is my favorite book by Dr. Ruckman. Ruckman's Battlefield Notes. That is a 
Really, really good book. Helped me a lot to understand Christian warfare. Uh, my duty as a soldier for Jesus Christ. I'm going to have to endure a little bit of hardness. There's my favorite book. And here's my second favorite book. The Full Cup. Ruckman's Autobiography. And a lot of you narrow-minded bigots out there really ought to read about the man and about what he went through in his life before you judge him. You know, <laughs> I gotta, you got to love that. Uh, the Anti-Intellectual Manifesto, talking about the modern educational system and how oftentimes it's not education, it's indoctrination. Uh, the Power of Negative Thinking, haven't read that one yet. Looking forward to it. Ruckman's Bible References, a lot of his favorite verses and, and things that they teach. A uh, good book. How to Teach Dispensational Truth, another one of the early books I read when I was studying for the ministry. Discrimination, the Key to Sanity. I haven't read that one either, but that looks very good. Christian Liars Library, uh, and then the Alexandrian Cult series. It goes over a lot of the Christian celebrities like Chuck Swindle or Billy Graham, some of these guys, and how that they will teach the Alexandrian line that no Bibles and no translation is inspired. You know, the King James Bible is just a translation. Blah, blah, blah. You know, we found older and better manuscripts and all that stuff. Uh, it gives the actual quotes where they come from and everything. Uh, Science and Philosophy by Dr. Ruckman gets into a lot of the uh, things like evolution and then modern psychotherapy and all that. Uh, very good points made in that book. King James Onlyism versus Scholarship Onlyism, which is a good point. That's what it is. It's you either use the King James Bible or you rely on scholarship. How to Teach the Original Greek. I haven't read that one yet. I thought it looked interesting. The Errors in the King James Bible. He covers a couple hundred of them, and it's funny because a lot of them, he pr presents the two scriptures first, and then he gets into the supposed error. And a lot of them, I read the two scriptures, and I think, where is there, where is there an error here? I mean, you'd really have to look hard to see it as an error. But that's what you have to do when you're looking for an alibi for your sin. You have to look hard to try and critique the Word of God. And then we have here the Ruckman Commentary Series. Uh, one of them is missing there. <laughs> it's out right now. Of course, members of this, our church here, excuse me, members of a church here are uh, free to borrow these books if they're faithful and get them back to me uh some books on soldiers there nation betrayed that's a good book about uh colonel james bogue writes um a man that uh basically the the uh rambo movies were made after but he's a very interesting man there uh, some books on snipers on soldiers and things guerrilla warfare there the interesting some of the a buddy actually bought that for me because we were talking about camping and he's like, oh, you got to see the, the camping gear that, you know, is in this book. You know, the camping suggestions. So, I'm not into guerrilla warfare. I'm not planning, a, you know, anti-government overthrows or anything. Don't get excited. Purple Hearts and Ancient Trees by Jay Grunfield. A uh, very interesting book. He was in World War II and he came back and he was going to become an executive in Weyerhaeuser Lumber Company and, um, Ended up, he said, I want to go out and work as a logger first. I don't want to just become an executive and not know the guys out in the in the woods, not know what they go through. A very rare individual. Um, <clears throat> won a Purple Heart, of course, there in World War II. Soldiers of Fortune bought this thing. Uh, it has some proof in it, documentation that the CIA was, in fact, in training... Uh, Afghanistan, you know, they called them Mujahideen back in the day, back in the 1980s. They sent millions, hundreds of millions of dollars, I think it was like $300 million over to finance the creation of them. Interesting stuff. Uh, Vietnam, I'm not going to pull this thing out, but there's a picture in there where the OSS, which was the precursor to the CIA, they were actually training North Vietnamese uh, soldiers back during World War II, you know, and 20 years later, our soldiers are fighting them over in Vietnam. Interesting. Uh, politically correct hunting, politically correct guns. I was part of a book club for a little bit, and I got those. And then you get into more woodworking type of stuff here. This is a good book on tree work. <laughs> you got to learn logging somehow, so I 
basically taught myself how to log. A lot of books, a lot of time, just going out and trying it. And uh, it's a very dangerous thing that you don't want to mess up on. <laughs> but uh, I don't have enough cord to go the whole way down to there to the end. But it's mostly woodworking books on this side here. Here you have uh, Fox's Book of Martyrs. Catholicism East of Eden. Um, <clears throat> the Two Babylons by Alexander Hislop. Very, very good book. Uh, really interesting. Very, very detailed. Again, written back in the 1800s. So it was a little bit more higher for higher intellect than what most people had today. Down there we have Bible zines, followed by a couple new versions here. Here we have uh, <clears throat> uh, How Satan Turned God or Turned America Against God. That's a book by William Grady. Uh, <clears throat> Glance through it. Haven't had a chance to read it yet. Here we have books on the Emergent Church. I've read those. Uh, the Canons and Decrees of the Council of Trent, Vatican II, Documentation, um, Woman Rides the Beast by Dave Hunt, on the Catholic Church, Hitler's Pope, right there, uh, Generous Orthodoxy by Brian McLaren, published by Zondervan, another emergent church leader that was in the Real Bible Version issue, Exposed, the New Testament in 26 translations, yeah, real good. A prophecy Study Bible by John Hagee. Somebody bought that for me. I wouldn't buy anything from him. But uh, Defender Study Bible. I'm going to be doing a review on this thing coming up. Green Brace Survival Manual. Somebody bought that for me. Thought I needed to have it or something, I guess. Uh, up there we have another copy of the little Bible inside the Bible. And then a Genesis Commentary by Micah Colston. Uh, both very good. And then we get over into here. This is an old... Real old hymn book I found at a used bookstore. The Baptist Hymnal. There's somebody bought me that book, Oswald Chambers. Again, I'm not a fan of his. Uh, this is interesting. John Bunyan, one of his books. And it was actually, they, they took the, he quoted the King James Bible. And they actually took those out and replaced them with New King James Version quotations. Uh, you know, forgery, but modern Christians don't care about such things. Honesty is, you know, just kind of gets in the way sometimes, I guess. Uh, some more new versions. Uh, Bible study charts and outlines. Expendable Elite uh, by Colonel Dangerous Dan Marvin. Uh, Save Man, he was actually interviewed by Brother Dave from Berean Beacon. Good interview. He's a Bible believer, King James Bible believer. Very interesting book there. Seeds of Deception about GMO, all that stuff. Uh, crisis preparedness, uh, more documentation stuff there, there's a catechism, there's another catechism, Koran, Book of Mormon, all the fine stuff, you know. Uh, there you have another Baltimore catechism, the occult ABC. Uh, I refer to that in my video on what are on the danger of tongues. It's actually written by a Christian, you know, uh, Dr. Kurt Koch is a Christian man. Foxfire 2 and 1. Some interesting stuff there. Church teaches. This is a uh, Jesuit fathers put that thing out. Man eaters book about tigers, I guess, over in India. And then a couple other ones there. Uh, the distilled Bible, early readers Bible. <clears throat> Up on the top, have this big old couple volume dictionary thing there. Some of the materials we give out. Some DVDs. Some of the Jack Chick comic books right there. There's a real ultra-giant print um, King James Bible. There's the four-volume set of the original 1610 Dewey Reams. Uh, the, there's the 1892, I think it is, AVRV, Parallel Bible, uh, given to me by a brother up in New York, Brother Tom. And uh, then there's some other older Bibles. There's my oldest Bible right there. That's an 1840 King James Bible. And, let's see if I can do this. Just cleared a couple of shelves here. Those were all Ruckman tapes and things. Cleared those. Here's again is my new versions. Uh, a lot of new version stuff down there. And <coughs> right there you can see 
the Lord of the Rings things. I was actually going to write a book exposing that whole thing. Uh, Lord of the Rings is not a Christian uh, story. It's a cult story. Tolkien was a high-level occultist. And I've done extensive research into that. And I always wanted to write a book or something on it. Maybe someday I'll be able to come out with a video. But uh, not Christian. Definitely not. These are <clears throat> not recommended. But we go up here. We have the Creation Science Debates and Special Studies. A lot of the uh, old VHS tapes. Some of Ruckman's stuff there. And there you go up to my uh, stock of DVDs that I ship out. And just a couple other things there. But uh, that's pretty much it for the bookshelf tour. I don't really know what else to say. Um, I have to quit here because my my throat is just about conking out on me. <laughs> I had a cold a couple days ago, and and uh, so I'm getting over it. But you know, still got a little ways to go. And uh, oh, here's another book. I almost forgot. This is one of my favorites. The uh, History of the Waldensies. Very very good book. I really this is one of my favorites. I love this book. Uh, another book over there I forgot to mention um, about Oliver Cromwell, another one of my heroes in the faith. Calvinist again, but he was a good guy. Uh, excellent soldier. So, oh no. I have books all over the place in here. I have them up in my computer room. I have, um, I have another bookshelf in my room, my bedroom. So this is just a small, not a small, but this is the, this is the majority of the books here that you see. But... I still do have books in other areas and their books lend out and everything else. So, for those of you who have been curious as to what books I have, um, what books I recommend, uh, <clears throat> a lot of the books that I have here, you don't have to study all that stuff to understand what's going on. I study these things because I wanted to be in ministry. All you really need is a King James Bible. It's covered over with a bunch of stuff here on my desk so I can't hold one up. But uh, that's going to be it for the video. So there you go, those of you who were curious. So, see ya.